The Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board was established in 1977. It is Nigeria's official entrance examination board for candidates seeking admission to all universities in the country. Before 1977, the 13 existing federal universities in the country conducted their own concessional entrance exams and admitted their students. But the system of admission was considered as having limitations and was quite often very expensive for the candidates. JAMS functions are to generally control the matriculation examinations into all universities, polytechnics, and colleges of education, appoint examiners, moderators, invigilators for those exams, and to place suitably qualified candidates in the tertiary institutions. Professor Dibu Ojerinde is the current registrar of JAM, and he joins me on View from the Top today. Thank you, Prof. Thank you very much. I thank you for tuning in. Let's begin with a brief biography of the JAM registrar before I launch into my conversation with him. Professor Dibu Ojerinde was born on 15 August 1947. He was educated at Wesley College, Ibado, Adeyemi College of Education, Ondo, University of Ife, and Cornell University, New York. He became a professor in 1986. Professor Ojerinde is an academic as well as an administrator, having taught briefly at some secondary schools in Ibado and Isei, and later in the College of Advanced Studies, Kano, and University of Ife, now Obafemi, Awolowo University. He was the director of the Institute of Education in UNIFE between 1984 and 1990. Professor Ojerinde is the first Nigerian professor of tests and measurement, pioneer director of monitoring and evaluation at the National Primary Education Commission, first director of the Center for Educational Measurement at the Federal Ministry of Education, the first registrar, National Board for Educational Measurement, and the first registrar, National Examinations Council, NECO. He became JAM registrar in 2007. Professor Jerude, JAM has obviously come a long way since 1977. We get a sense that the most important, uh, the most challenging issues confronting JAM was the issue of examination malpractices. Is that still the case? Well, I think it's gradually a thing of the past. I want to say that uh, by 2007, when I came into JAM, the rate was about 16 percent and it has de decreased to last year we had about 0.7 percent 0.7 percent and this year is about 0.5 percent so things are getting better because we are taking efforts to block all the loopholes of course you block one here nigeria take another higher group but so far this uh, last exercise was quite uh, encouraging to the extent that we are able to account for 0.5% in uh, the cases of uh, match, um, exam malpractice. How much has the computer-based testing helped in reducing oh, yes. the incidence of exam malpractice? That is the magic. That is the magic. Last year, when we used the computer-based test, there was no one caught cheating. But of course, we had only about 96,000 candidates that year. But this year, we had over 617,000 candidates. 617,000 candidates. The number we caught was less than, in fact, 20, to the extent that when we now talk of overall cheating, uh, it happened more in the paper pencil test than in computer based test. But of course, we change our strategies from year to year, even in the paper pencil test. So, things, I must say that with time, we discovered that. For computer-based tests, it will be zero percent. So you think the computer-based test is the panacea to all of the problems it, so it far of so the far, UTME? So far, as we have seen from our two outings, it's a solution to our problem. Anybody who thinks that you can go and see cheat in the uh, computer-based test is deceiving himself. Let me tell you, 250 of us may be in the same examination hall, doing the same mathematics, but I'm telling you, you are going to be faced with different questions entirely when you are doing it. The same thing is true of chemistry or physics to the extent that we have gotten a bank of items in our uh, item bank. So when we send the questions to the center, you don't know what is coming for you. I don't even know. It's already programmed. And in fact, the system of transportation from our point 
to the examination centers has always been a problem for us to the extent that you don't know what happened to the questions before they read their centers, and the papers before they read their centers. But now, in three minutes from our office, we can send questions to the centers anywhere in Nigeria. And in fact, several countries outside Nigeria, even Ghana. And we send the questions also to them like that. Before you know it, the children are walking. Nothing like uh, giraffing. You know giraffing is stretching your neck. Nothing like a change of papers. I've even told them, bring in your handset. But of course, I will not allow it because some handsets have uh, cameras. They will now begin to film the screen. If you, I mean, if you pick, take the picture of the screen, but that will not be uh, proper. Even then, it cannot help. You talked about uh, the foreign centers now, seven of them, and yeah. we know that you, these exams are held simultaneously in about 392 towns in Nigeria. Yes. Isn't a uh, jam biting off more than it can chew with all of these um, other centers outside of the country? Well, that is the essence of technology. Look, all of us, all over the world, you see CNN. Is uh, CNN biting more than it can chew? Well, I guess uh, not. Well, so we are not biting. It's the same thing, the same principle. You sit down here, you listen to the, um, if it's not FM station, even FM station in uh, in uh, Lagos. Everybody listens to it, even in Ogun State, in, uh, what do you call it? In uh, Ibadan State, Ibadan, or your state, name it. And they all hear it. So we are not biting more than what we can chew. In fact, we are reducing the number of people involved in our examination. We use technology to our advantage now. JAM accredited about 160 exam centers uh, yeah. this year as against 65 last year. Yes. Um, how many do you think would be adequate for you to, you know, achieve yeah. what you plan to achieve with, with okay. the CBT? Normally, before, before now, we had 3,085 centers for paper pencil tests. So if we are now saying we need 3,085 centers for CBT, we are not being realistic. We are not taking uh, this into consideration. But last year, when we had 56 centers, like you said, we conducted the examination even in uh, less than three days. But this time around, when we had 165 centers this year, we conducted the examination for about two weeks. Despite that, in some centers, we stayed for only four days. In some centers, we stayed for 14 days. So I think if you have up to 300 centers, you should be able to conduct the examination for, for 2 million candidates within two weeks, to the extent that we are going to do it in the morning, we do it in the day, we do it in the evening. Three sessions per day in, a, in any center. Within two weeks, we should be able to finish. The system allows it. Uh, the flexibility is there. If you are late today in the morning, we can allow you to do it in the evening, but we will not allow it again because people are now deliberately coming late thinking that it will be an advantage. It's not an advantage. So if we are able to have 300, 300 centers solid, believe me, it's sufficient. You have argued that universities should scrap post jump exams, but universities insist that the post -UM, UTA UME interaction is an integrity check uh, in the university admission process. What exactly do you have against it, apart from what you say are irrelevant questions yeah. and, and so forth? Okay. You see, um, I'm, a I'm a measurement person, and I believe in crossing rubicons, but the rubicons should be relevant to what they are going to do. The Rubicon of crossing SSC is a process of going to the university. In other words, you must pass your SSC. It's a Rubicon. Then, the Rub next Rubicon now is that you must excel in JAM because it's a competitive exam. So you should be able to excel over your others. That is what we are saying. But unfortunately, let me say it, some years back, things went awry in a jam exam to the extent that people no longer believed in the result. And that brought about what we call post -UTME. Not No examination is perfect anywhere in the world. Even the post -UTME, 
that they, we are crying about. It's not perfect. Even the examinations we hold in the institutions, among students who are in our nose every day, there's no perfection in it. So we should be able to tolerate some of the uh, idiosyncrasies embedded into in the, in the examination conduct. But my own argument against post me is that it has become a money-making venture rather than a validation process. It has become a process where some people are deliberately being denied admission by certain institutions rather than, again, cross-validation system. I'm not completely against it, okay, but it's, it's, it's not being done properly. Okay, what, what do you recommend? Because we know that JAM, one of the duties of JAM is to place these candidates in these universities, yeah. taking into account the guidelines approved for each tertiary institution by its owners. Yeah. So if the owners of these universities insist on post-UTME, mm -hmm. you're not in a position to say they shouldn't do it. Okay. So what would you recommend 